Fire is often cited as one of the most important discoveries humans have ever made. And because nobody likes to constantly start a bonfire in order to light their cigarette, we needed a way to make it more portable. Of course, this is where the lighter comes into play. The forerunner to the modern day lighter was the flintlock pistol. In fact, interestingly enough, by definition, a flintlock pistol can be classified as a lighter. And, uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to light a cigarette with one. The method a flintlock pistol used to light its gunpowder, by taking a piece of flint, usually stored in the hammer of the pistol, and striking it against a piece of steel in order to create a spark would be expanded upon to create the first commercially successful lighter. The reason I say the first commercially successful lighter is because the first lighter did not use flint and steel to create fire. Instead, it used a chemical reaction between platinum and hydrogen to create heat. This was called Dopperamer's lamp, named after the inventor Johann Wolfgang Dopperamer. However, Dopperamer's lamp saw very little commercial success, as the platinum catalyst was expensive, which made it more of a luxury item. There was also this little thing about the hydrogen being highly explosive, but that's all in the details. In 1903, ferium was patented by Karl Angon von Wuschbeck. Ferium is essentially a special kind of flint that allowed the modern day lighter to be possible. However, these lighters are still not what you and I would consider a modern day lighter. For one, they required a wick, which you would have to change occasionally. They also didn't use butane, instead they used napa, which was more of an oily substance that could be wicked up. These lighters, while certainly cheaper and safer than platinum lighters, were still more of a luxury item. According to Zippo, in 1933, you could expect to pay $1.95 for a lighter. Adjusted for inflation, this brings the cost up to approximately $36. And this is cheap. Before Zippo, prices were much higher. While the everyday blue collar worker could afford this, it just wasn't that common. About the same equivalence as buying an expensive fountain pen today. Unless you're an enthusiast, the cheaper option will work just fine. And this is what happened with lighters. Everyday smokers opted for the much cheaper match. In the 1940s, the next big step came for lighters. Napa was replaced with butane. This meant that there was no longer a wick that had to be replaced. Also since butane is compressible, manufacturers can now control the flame intensity. After this, we didn't see any significant changes with lighters until Bic introduced their disposable lighter in 1973. At this point, lighters were no longer a status symbol, they were cheap and disposable. And this is the lighter that we have today. While you can buy better lighters, like Zippos for example, majority of people prefer the cheap and expensive option, because it gets the job done and it works just fine. Well guys, that does it for our brief history on the everyday lighter. I hope you enjoy the video, and if not, don't be afraid to tell us what you didn't like. If you did like it, however, check out our last video on a brief history of the computer mouse. And there will be more to come. And as always, please enjoy the rest of your internet going experience.